Hey there, welcome to Math 8, Unit 1, Lesson 5, talking about coordinate moves today. We're going to transform some figures and see what happens to coordinates of points, which means we're going to be looking at where a point is and what happens as we move them around a little bit there. So the first one you worked on in class today, you talked about selecting translations that take triangle T to U, and there might be more than one correct answer. So begin looking at things like if I started here at negative 3, 0, which is here, negative three, zero, and I move it to one, two, which is here, is that a good translation? Does that mean, am I keeping everything the same, in the same shape, not spinning around? We'd say, yes, that's definitely doing that there. If I translate two, one, which is here, to negative two, one, while that's the correct point, they match, that's going from you to t and that's not what we're after there right so that's why that one didn't quite work yeah it's the same shift but we're trying to move t to u not u to t so follow the directions up here make sure you know where you want to go negative four negative three which is here to the zero comma negative one which is here that's a translation going the right direction we would say yes for that one and then finally they gave us one comma two which was also here Translating that to two comma one to there, that's not even gonna be close. We would say no to that one. So the idea is looking at how we can slide things around on a coordinate plane and line up those coordinates to find the matching pieces and matching parts of the other shapes. Then you went to looking at how do we reflect points across the coordinate plane. And I already began this part here by 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 pointing down my putting on my first points, A, B, C, D, and E and F. And it wants you to make a reflection using the x-axis as a line of reflection. So our x-axis is this guy right here. This is our x-axis going across here. So that's my x. So we're going to reflect across that way here. So if a starts at, at in this case here, 0 0.5 comma 4, and I want to reflect across this way, we're going to move it the same x value, 0 0.5, but I move down to negative 4 and we would call this a prime and we would have the same x value 0 0.5 comma negative 4 and we're starting to see what's the change the change is x stays the same when I go across the x but the y value becomes the opposite instead of positive 4 I get a negative 4 and that same pattern took place in other cases as well if I had b which was initially at negative 4 comma 5 and I reflect that one also across the x-axis, which is what I want you to do here. I'm going to keep my x value the same and drop down here to negative 5 for a b prime. So I have negative 4 comma negative 5. So again, the value that's changing is the y value. When I reflect across the x, the y value changes. And you did that with the other points as well. You did things like this one, what's on the x-axis, then there's really no change, and d prime is in the same spot. No big change there. And when you did c, we noticed it started here, so we flecked across, one, two, one, two, and c prime goes here. And for e, e was on the y-axis, but we're still gonna reflect across, and we end up over here, right over there. And you can label those points, which I'm sure you did in your class, but the thing was, we want to notice is that it's the y value that seems to change when we reflect across the x-axis. Okay, you moved on then to number two, which talked about, well, if that's true, then can, do you know what these uh, values are going to be? If we're reflecting across the x-axis, we just said it's the y that will change. So if I have a 13 comma 10 and I reflect, then that means my x stays the same but my y value is what changes there. That's what happens when you reflect across the x-axis. The same would be true of the other ones. If I had a 13 comma negative 20 to start with, then the reflection would be 13 comma, the opposite of negative 20 is positive 20. If I had 13 comma 570, the opposite would be 13 comma negative 570 as I reflect across the x-axis. For number three in the class again, you had the point R at three comma two is where that's located there. It says without graphing, predict the coordinates of image R if 
uh, a point R if R were reflected using the Y axis. So that means now we're looking at the Y axis as our kind of our place where we're gonna bend things over, which means this guy is gonna now move over to here, right? We're going that direction. So if when we went from the X axis, when we reflected across the X axis, meant the Y changed, now when we do the y reflect across the y axis what do you think is going to change we said the x changes so if i had a three comma two then i should predict that i should have a negative three comma two and indeed that's where i would put point r prime right there at negative three comma two for the reflection point there okay so this is what's happening when we reflect things back and forth you then spend some time playing with some line segments possibly and the same idea with the line segments but now I have a line that I'm going to be, be playing around with here AB. I'm going to go ahead and just make my line a little bit darker here just so I make sure it's, I can see through it see through it, uh, the patty paper and see it and so I have AB right here and what it asks you to do from a couple things is to draw some different different shapes and so for number one when you were going again going through this in your classwork today it said to rotate segment AB 90 degrees counterclockwise around center B. Okay, so this is B. I want to rotate it counterclockwise. And my goal here is to make a 90 degree angle. And you can see as I move this around, my goal is to end up with a, a right angle, right like so. Now, because I'm playing with uh, grid paper, I notice that I'm probably also going to end up on an actual spot on the grid here. And then I can perhaps do my connect the dots and use a straight edge, edge of some sort and connect my dots like so. To say, okay, that's going to be this one right there. 90 degree angle, looking pretty good so far. Now that's going to be, we're going to make this coordinate C. So that becomes C. What other, what other coordinates? We're at 3 comma negative 2. You then took your thing and rotated that same line. We started back over here. And it said rotate it around, counterclockwise counter around center A to get a 90 degree angle. Again, same idea. If I put this here, I want to get that 90 degree angle. Let's be right about there to get that 90 degrees. And we can see we're sitting here at, where are we at? We're at 1, 7. 1, 7. I play my connect the dot game once again. And I have this line there, and we call that point D right there. Looking pretty good. And then you had to rotate segment AB uh, clockwise around 0, 0. That's my point right here. What I did with the tracing paper here is I made a 90 degree angle, and then I put my pencil at, at the origin. And I'm going to rotate the whole thing 90 degrees. It says clockwise. Clockwise is this direction. And I'm going to do that until my little L shape here hits right there. Once it does that, now I know I've gone 90 degrees. And I can take a look at where I am. And I notice that I'm, I'm right here on the 3 value. I'm at the 3. And I'm down here at this point right here. Right there. And I can play again, connect the dots. And so when I rotate it 90 degrees around the origin, I end up with this point, which is we're going to call it says call it B and F. Seems strange we already have a B, but okay. B and F, no problem. So I have that one there. And it says compare the two 90 degree rotations of segments A and B. What's the same about them? What's different? We can see that they're in different places, but they do seem to be running almost like what we call parallel lines, right? If they're going the same direction. And so that 90 degree rotation means that it's going to end up going the same direction, but just not in the same exact spot. So as wrapping it up here before we get to our homework help, the point is that we can use our coordinates in order to describe translations. We can have a sequence of horizontal and vertical translations, moving things from left to right, up and down, different things there. We can also reflect points across an axis, and when we do that, the sign of the one changes. So when I reflect across X, I change the Y value. When I reflect across Y, I change the X value. And so that's kind of a summary of what you did today in your class. So let's take a look then at your homework assignment. 
which was less than one, uh, less than five, sorry, on the coordinate moves. We have some points. We have point A and B and C. What are the coordinates of A, B, and C? After a translation to the right by four and up one. So we're gonna be going right four and up one. So here's A, we go one, two, three, four, and up one, and we call that A prime. For B, we go over four, one, two, three, four, and up one, and we call that B prime. And C, one, two, three, four, and up one, and we call that C prime. So that's our first step for number one, okay? For number two, what we want to do is it says here, or B, here are some points D, E, and F. And for D, E, and F, it says, um, what are the coordinates of D, E, and F after reflection over the Y axis? Again, let's not forget that our Y one is this one, okay? So we're going to reflect things over that point, that, that line there. So if this one is already at negative three comma, three and I'm going to reflect over the y-axis then that means my value that's going to change is my x value and so I'll put that at three comma three for my d prime for e this one is already at five comma zero I'm reflecting across the y-axis then my x value changes to negative five comma zero I'm sorry about that dot there and this becomes e prime okay right here at negative five comma zero. I'll to label this one three comma three. And then for F, I'm here already at two comma negative two. And so what's gonna change is I'm gonna go to negative two comma negative two as I change that X value, change that X value. And I end up placing that right there for F prime. All right, so that's that part there, just reflecting things over the Y axis. The next one, I have some more points. And it says, what are the coordinates of GHI after rotation about zero, zero by 90 degrees clockwise? So I have some, unfortunately I have some dots. My, my ink went through, sorry about that. So here's G, here's H, I'm making darker, and here is I. So that's my G, H, and I is where I'm at right now. And it says, we're gonna take those dots there and we're gonna rotate them around the axes, the origin, sorry, by 90 degrees clockwise. So that means I could take my shape here, my graph, my patty paper, I can call this H, I can call this G, I can call this I, and here's my origin, and I'm gonna rotate it, it said 90 degrees clockwise. So I'm gonna draw a 90 degree angle on my patty paper, okay? And then I'm gonna go clockwise 90 degrees. Put my pencil there and rotate until my little hash mark lines up. And I'm now at 90 degrees this way. At this point now, I can look back and say, oh, well, then let's label these here. H is at zero comma four, or H prime. So here's H prime. G is right here at three comma one. So here's G prime. And then I is down here at negative two comma negative three. And we'll call that I prime. So it just took a little bit of drawing and sketching and we rotate that around and that's what we have. Finally, number two says describe the sequence of transformations that makes trapezoid A, this one, end up a trapezoid B. So to do this one, if I was to take this shape and draw it real quick like so, and so, and so, and so, and if I wanna move it over there, I'm gonna to have to, first of all, probably translate it up, right, in some direction, I'm gonna go up to get to this level. I'm gonna then probably have to rotate it. Judging by what it looks like, this is just what it looks like, it looks like I'm rotating it about that much. If I'm rotating it about that much, hmm, that's not too far. And what I could do is I could take my patty paper actually, kind of fun thing here. I could draw a line on the edge of the patty paper. I can rotate it until it kind of matches the other one, just eyeballing it right now. That looks about right. And I could draw a line right there. And at this point, if I look, I can probably figure out, oh, what is that measurement gonna be? Take out a protractor, pop 
pop that right there and this one shows me about 50 degrees which means I probably didn't do it well enough probably it should be 60 degrees based upon the type of shape that it is either way I'm going to translate up I'm going to then rotate this is not I'm not writing in order but I rotate counterclockwise probably about 60 degrees and then I'm going to translate to the left okay so I have a translation up step one rotates counterclockwise 60 degrees two and then translates to the left three probably about three moves to get that there and number three reflect polygon P using line L is our last one here and so the idea once again is I take my shape and if I was to reflect that across the line we're saying if I had this shape right here and I asked you to reflect it across there I'm basically taking it here and bending it or folding it this way so I land something oops sorry about that something like that so I take my shape I trace it I fold it and I end up there but knowing what I know about coordinates now I can also just simply look and say well that's not too bad because if this is my reflection line on the dot, dotted line right there then what's going to happen is I'm going to put this point to there here I go one two over so one two over and that's my top line I go down a dot there down a diagonal there I go down a diagonal there to there go over one over one up one up one and connect my final dot there and so I have a nice reflected image of P going over there to our new one reflected across the line there. Hope that helps out your homework. Have a great day.